Okay, so on to installing Ruby. Before we do that, let's uh, make something a little bit more convenient for us. Uh, let's create a shortcut so that we have the row.bat script is available or batch files available from our desktop. The way we can do that is right click on start and go to open Windows Explorer, then click C and then double click row and then when you find the row.bat just right click like that and go to send to desktop. Okay, so that's how we're going to create the shortcut. And then close that and I'll just bring mine down here again. So now on my desktop I've got the row.bat shortcut. Okay, so now when I double click the shortcut, right, it comes and brings up uh, or the command prompt. Okay, so with that done, let's close that and let's bring up a browser and navigate to rubyinstaller.org. Okay, and this is where we're going to find um, a, a Windows installer for Ruby. And once you're there at rubyinstaller.org, click on download. And from download, we want to click on this first link here. This is the 32-bit version of Ruby. This here is the 64-bit. We do not want the 64-bit. We only want the 32-bit. And that goes for people that are on 32-bit or 64-bit. Um, just because you have a 64-bit OS doesn't mean that you need to install this. And in fact, I won't be able to help you debug any issues with the 64-bit. These instructions only cover the 32-bit. So click on this first link to get it started downloading. And the other thing that we need is the development kit that Ruby, uh, for Ruby here for Windows. And we want to find the link here where it says for use with Ruby 2.0 32-bit. Click this link. Make sure there's, there's a few here that you can choose from. Make sure you click the second link, okay, for Ruby 2.0 with the 32-bit. Okay, so now Ruby installer looks like that's been downloaded. Let's click that to get it going. And English is fine. And we'll accept the license. Now here we want to specify the directory that uh, to install Ruby. We want to put it under the ROW directory. So make sure you got C colon backslash and then ROW and then a backslash Ruby 200. Okay, so just like that. Um, if you like, you can add Ruby, ex uh, Ruby executables to your path. That'll be for the system-wide path so that you can access Ruby outside of our uh, Ruby on Rails command prompt. So if you want to do that, uh, select that. And then from here, click install. So just make sure C colon backslash row backslash Ruby 200 or 200. Click install. Right, and click finish. Now, uh, DevKit is installed or downloaded, so let's get DevKit going. Now, DevKit's an, uh, a self-extracting archive. Let's um, put the location to be C colon backslash ROW and then backslash, and we'll put Ruby 200, and then we'll put backslash DevKit. Okay, so just like that, we're going to extract dev kit under that recent uh, install for Ruby. Okay, so let's click extract. And that, as that's extracting, let's bring up our command prompt. So the way we can do that is go over to our shortcut that we made. So double click that. And now what will be interesting is whether or not Ruby's on our, is, the question is, is Ruby available? If we do Ruby-V, you'll notice here that Ruby is not recognized. And so why is that? That's because we're not setting the path to include the Ruby bin directory, which is where the Ruby executable is. Okay, so let's modify our notepad dot or our row dot bat with notepad. So we'll notepad space row dot bat. And so what this means is now is we've got another uh, location to add to the path. And uh, just for the sake of keeping things somewhat neat and tidy, I'm going to hit enter here and I'm going to start another path uh, entry. I'm going to go set path equals and then I'm going to set it to the current path or the current, the uh, existing path variable. So that's how we reference that with the percent signs around it. 
semicolon c colon backslash and we want to type in row for row and then we want the ruby 200 and then backslash bin okay now um, when I save that and we'll close this and let's start up the row.bat again the, the <clears throat> our rails and windows command prompt now when we do let's echo out the path and you'll see now that the path contains right the Windows System 32, the Windows directory, and now the Ru the Ruby uh, 2.0 bin directory. So now when we type in Ruby-V, you'll see now that we've got the uh, the Ruby executable was able to run, and it's and when we add the dash V to tell us the version, this is what we get. We want to make sure that the i386 MINGW32 is what you see here. If you see anything different, that means you've downloaded the incorrect version of Ruby and you'll want to uninstall it and reinstall uh, after downloading the correct version. Okay, so now with the um, version of Ruby uh, uh, verified, the next thing we'll want to do from the row directory, let's just hit DIR and we can see now that we've got row.bat and we've got Ruby 2.0.0. So let's CD into Ruby like that and now the command line gives us an, uh, a feature called tab completion. So when I type in RU, uh, actually let's start off with R and let's see what happens when I hit tab. You can see how it selects Ruby 2.0.0, so that's what we want, and then hit enter. I think if we hit tab again, it would go through to the next one. Let's see. Yeah, so when we CD, it's choosing the available directory starting with R. So tab completion is very useful. And then we hit enter and we hit DIR again, you'll see that we've got a bunch of directories including DevKit. Okay, so let's CD into DevKit and let's hit DIR. Now there's a, the way to install DevKit is to type Ruby space and then we want to reference this file here, this dk.rb, we'll go dk.rb init and this will initialize the uh, dev kit for installation and you'll notice here that it said it found an installer or it found Ruby at at uh, C colon row Ruby 2.0 and the forward slashes here might be a little bit confusing um, but essentially it means the same thing that we're uh, that the location uh, it was able to find Ruby uh, from and the location is correct right we're in the row Ruby 2.0 directory <clears throat> so now from here we want to type in ruby dk.rb install and then hit enter and that looks like it was successful now to test the uh, installation let's go back to the browser and you'll notice over here that there's a link here that takes us over to github where they go over the uh, installation instructions which I've walked through and at the end here there's a verification to test this to test the installation. So let's try installing this JSON gem. And we'll just just copy just highlight that text there, right click copy, gem install, JSON, and we're gonna go back to our command prompt. And I'm gonna right click and paste that command in. And as well I'm gonna add in a couple more uh, arguments here. We're gonna go dash dash no dash ri and dash dash no rdoc. So that's going to skip the documentation just to make the installation a little faster and the documentation uh, for the gem is not, not necessary for us. So let's uh, hit enter to, to test the installation. You can see here that it's, that it's using DevKit and it's building the native extensions and it says that it's installed, right? So now one more verification. Uh, we'll just scroll or just go back to the GitHub site here and we want to copy in this command here okay where it's going to load the JSON and output the value and let's go back to our command prompt right click paste what we should see is that 42 uh, is printed and sure enough the 42 shows so that verifies for us that Ruby is installed when we've got DevKit installed and that we can install gems that require native extensions to be compiled.
So to review what we've done, uh, let's actually exit out of here. Uh, we can either exit, you might have seen me type exit before, or hit the close button. Uh, but let's just hit exit to get out of there. And let's uh, minimize the browser. And let's double click on row.bat on our, on our desktop to load the command prompt. Okay, so now let's, uh, if we type dir, we've got row.bat and the Ruby 200 directory or 200. If we type in Ruby V, uh, we'll see that we've got Ruby 200, P353, and uh, really important part right here is that we got I386 MINGW32. Okay, and yeah, with that, we're ready to go on to the next video.